Hi, Luke here from Technicamps, and today we're going to be looking at uh, shift ciphers and Caesar ciphers. So the Caesar cipher is a type of shift cipher uh, which was used by Julius Caesar uh, over 2,000 years ago. Shift ciphers are a type of substitution cipher, um, so we're going to be substituting letters for other letters in this case. Uh, they work by shifting the alphabet forward a number of places during encryption, and then during decryption we shift the alphabet backwards. How far forward we shift is the key we're going to be using in our system. So let's look at encryption first. Um, the Caesar cipher is a shift cipher with a key of three. So during encryption, every letter in the plain text message is going to be shifted forward three spaces in the alphabet. So the letter A will be shifted forward one, two, three spaces to the letter D. You can follow the lines. Okay, so we've got our plain text message here, which is hello. So three letters forward from H is I, J, K. So we should see that the first letter is K. Three spaces forward from E. Well, we can follow the line here. And we see that it's H. Uh, three spaces forward from L is L, M, N, O. So we get an O. Three spaces forward from L is still going to be O. And then three spaces forward from O is R. OK, so this is all encryption. And we were shifting forward three spaces. So if we look at decryption, decryption, we've received a ciphertext and we need to shift the letters backwards, uh, again, three spaces because we're doing a Caesar cipher. So we've received the ciphertext Z, R, U, O, G. We're going to shift three spaces backwards from Z, which is W, because we get W, then X, Y, Z. Um, three spaces backwards from R is O. Three spaces backwards from U is R. Three spaces backwards from O is L, because L, M, N, O. And then three spaces backwards from G, if we follow the arrow here, we should see that it's a D. Now, this is quite difficult to do, uh, shifting backwards especially. Um, so we're going to come up with this tool called a cipher wheel, which is going to help us. So we'll put up a PDF that you can download and make one of these yourself. But um, it's basically two different circles. So this is a circle here and a circle here. And you'll see that they have the alphabet on them going all the way around in a ring. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to cut each of these circles out uh, along the outside line and then connect them together through the black dots. Normally you, we do this with a split leg pin. Um, if you don't want to do the cutting out at home, uh, you can't do that, that's fine. Um, we have this online resource, so bit.ly slash cipherwheel, um, and it will take you to uh, an online cipher wheel that you can use instead. OK, so I'll just leave this up for a second. You can pause the video if you need the link. OK, so now that we've got access to a cipher wheel, how do we use it? Step one is to rotate the inside ring, so the smaller of the two rings. Uh, so the key number is directly below the letter A on the bigger wheel. Uh, so right now we've got the letter A below the letter A, so we've got a shift of zero. If we're going to be encrypting a message, we need to find the letter we are encrypting on the outside ring, the big ring, and then we write down the letter that's directly below it. And if we are decrypting, we find the letter on the smaller of the two rings, and we write down the letter directly above it. Okay, so we'll do a couple of examples. If we think about a key three, so I've rotated the inside ring so that the number three is directly below the letter A. And if I was doing encryption, let's say I wanted to encrypt the letter M, I'd find the letter M on the outside ring and write down the letter directly below it, which is the letter P. If I was decrypting, so going from a cipher text back into a plain text, I'd look for a letter on the inside ring and write down the letter on the outside. So let's say I looked for the letter Y, I had the letter Y in my cipher text, I'd look for the letter above it, and the letter directly above it is the letter V. Okay, so this is for a key three, which is the first key you're going to be using on your sheet. Um, let's look at some other ones though. So key 17, again, I've rotated the inside ring, so the number 17 is directly below the letter A. If I'm doing encryption, I find my letter on the outside ring. So let's say I was looking for the letter I, the letter directly below it is the one I write down, which is Z. If I was doing decryption, I find the letter on the inside ring and write down the letter directly above it. So let's say I have my ciphertext contained the letter V. The letter directly above V is the letter E, so that's the one I'd write down for my plain text. Okay, and there are a bunch of examples. So here's 11. We shift the inside ring so 11's below the letter A, and so on. 
Okay, so shift ciphers have more than just the shift 3. There are 26 possible shifts, 0, 1, 2, all the way up to 25. Uh, in the worksheet, we're going to tell you which shift to use up until the very last one, up until the extension. Um, so when you get to the extension, if you're struggling, uh, you can still break it, uh, and here are some tips. So the most common three-letter words are the, and, are, for, and not. Letters after apostrophes can only be D, like I'd, double L, like I'll, uh, an M, like I'm, R, E, like your, uh, an S, a T, or a V, E. Okay. And then single letter words can only be an A or an I. There are no other single letter words in the English language. So if you need, if you're stuck and you need help, come back to the video. Um, but hopefully you should be able to do the worksheet now. And once you've done the worksheet, submit your answers online uh, and hopefully you'll get some points.